So Apple recently released a full version of Logic Pro for the iPad, and I'm really excited. I thought today would be an awesome chance to share with you all my initial thoughts and feelings by just doing a walkthrough of the software for the first time. So here we have unlocking Logic Pro for iPad. Let's get into it. I've been using Logic Pro since about 2009, and uh, it's been a really important part of my musical creation and my musical life. And previously there was only a Logic Pro remote, kind of like a companion app that you could use on iPad and kind of work together with your computer. It was pretty cool. You could do things like kind of control the computer, hit record, use transport functions, but it wasn't a standalone program. It was just used as a companion app along with Logic Pro on your computer. Um, the idea of having a mobile version of Logic Pro that I can take anywhere, take advantage of the touch screen and possibly even the Apple Pencil is pretty exciting. So let's check out what's happening here and kind of see what some of the features are and talk about ways in which I would incorporate it in my own professional life. Let's go ahead and dive into our first project here. I'm just going to hit tracks and uh, add new track and uh, look what we have. All right, uh, let's start off with the pattern instrument. Just going to select that and pretty cool. We're already open to this project. Looking good, it's a drum machine I see here. Uh, what happens? Okay, cool. If I touch here, it activates the sound and it looks like I can swap that kick out for different things. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Oh yeah, to be able to just like easily click either one of these and it loads super fast too, like really fast. Cool, let's come down here kind of scrolling on top of the instrument. Let's load in some hi-hats. Oh yeah, that's cool. I can just kind of like like drag with my finger and it highlights all of those. That's, that's pretty cool, okay. Let's uh, cycle this. Yeah, just touch it. Very similar to Logic Pro on the computer. My finger replacing that. Uh, I can do the cycle on and off here. Let's hear what this sounds like. Love it. Let's add in some snare on two and four. Okay, so like quickly making music right away. I am curious here. Now that's pretty awesome. Even with this, you have a lot of control over velocity, um, repeat, note, octave. Yo, that's pretty cool. Let's select this velocity. <laughs> I can just kind of like slide my finger up and down to change the velocity of that clap. Make this first one soft, second one loud. Yo, so already, like, this is winning because uh, it's just super easy to interact with this. And the dope part is, my understanding is, you can take everything from here and easily, like, transfer it over to your computer and continue to work on the project. Um, for percussion, like, this is awesome. I'm just, let's put this pattern in and see what it sounds like. Can easily solo it, change the sound. Okay, I am noticing uh, there is a little slight delay as you load a sound and it keeps going. So obviously I wouldn't do this part live because it isn't like an immediate seamless transition, which is okay if you're just producing. That's cool. Okay, yeah, so that's already pretty powerful. There's a lot of options here, uh, tons of different sounds I can get into. Seems like it's pretty easy to like slip them all out. Let's say that I wanna change this, kinda looking through the different options. Let's swap this out for a cowbell and solo that.
Yeah, all right, cool. So drums, super powerful, already a lot happening there. I love it. Uh, let's see how easy it is to just add another instrument. So I'm looking for some sort of like plus or something like that. Can I swipe down on this? Oh, easy. I can easily just swipe down on that to get rid of it. Let's add in another instrument, uh, just like Logic. I'm just gonna hit the plus there. And what happens if I try to, yeah instruments another patch instrument and let's try vintage keys and see what happens when I just pull up like an electronic piano oh man okay so here it's got like a list of all these chords and it looks like wow yeah you could do everything like basically like a step sequencer for each one of these let's try this on just like C And I'm just kind of messing around. Let's see what this sounds like. All right, so I will say, if you're not looking to play like a tr traditional keyboard, which we'll mess around with, um, I don't feel like, you know, I got big fingers. So trying to... I don't think it's really the in, the intent of this. It's not it's not horrible, but honestly, I like the option of the step sequencer if I'm just kind of doing something quickly on the go because my fingers can easily get like super jumbled here. Um, what do I want to do? Let me see what happens if I try to program that. All right, so I already got the C in there. Let's do this on the F, and let's come down to the D. What does this sound like? pretty intuitive like to use this that wasn't hard to program at all it ends up giving me like this cool sound let's like take the solo off and see what it sounds like all right so the mix is already bugging me a little bit so let's just go ahead and get in there and fix it I'm gonna come back on this drum track and uh, let's come down here and, and get the volume of this kind of impact dark that I have on there uh, let's see where is the mixer? Let's look at the different windows here. Okay, cool. When I hit this information, just like Logic. Wow, that's, that's wild. I can hit this little tab here and I have access to, um, I have access to the volume. Let's see what this does. So this looks like it's the volume for the entire drum kit, which is cool. Okay. So the first slider you see here is going to be the volume knob specifically for whatever track I'm on. Oops, I don't know what I just did. It's cool. Um, and then the second one is going to be that whole group of the entire drum kit. So let's just cut that down some. Okay, cool. Let's see how hard it is to put uh, a bass in. All right, so select down here. Let's hit this plus and let's pull up a MIDI instrument. And automatically it picks something up. Let's say that I want to look through some bass instruments. I'm going to filter out bass and let's bring up an 808 here. Okay, and then I magic we can still get to the step sequencer if we needed to or do we have to make that a particular way? Let's see. You can see this here, which is cool. View options, I'll repeat. Velocity, how do we get back to the step sequencer? Yeah, that's cool, I don't even know what this is. All right, we're getting real time here, people. This is just truly my first time messing around with this. Aha, there we go, so now we got it. So let's see, I get on this, this base, and I'm gonna hit down here in the, in the lower left-hand corner. I'm gonna select where it shows piano, and it shows keyboard, drum pads, fretboard. What? Wow. 
Yo, this is pretty crazy. Okay. Yeah, so I got to say, like, for somebody that plays bass and wants to have this experience, this isn't an experience that you would just have, like, on a MIDI keyboard. You'd have to play it like a keyboard. In this case... I have modulation, the velocity range is here, and I can play it like a bass, that's pretty cool. Let's just change this view one more time. And we have guitar strips, chord strips. Let's switch instruments, let's go back over here to this keyboard, and let's check out what this chord strip looks like, because that's pretty cool. Oh, come on. <laughs> so it's got like all these different things that are working in the key of C. One, four, five, flat seven. Okay. Wow, tons of options here. And I'm sure you can uh, kind of change. What? Yeah, all right, so this is wild. So basically I'm touching it and interacting with it where I can just kind of like click and drag down with my finger or up and it's just moving through these chords yeah that's that's really cool and then what is this sustain that's awesome I could hold on to the sustain okay that's pretty awesome I'm so it's just Kind of different ways of creating. I think the temptation would be to jump in and want to go straight to this keyboard because that's kind of what we're comfortable with seeing. But really, I think it's about these other unique ways that we can look at different things here. And I noticed uh, as I was messing around, uh, I'm going to go back over here to this keyboard view and kind of getting used to the interface. That's cool. There's something that says scale. Let's check out what that is. I'm going to hit scale and let's activate it. Okay, so I can see octave C1 to C2 to C3. Yo, so as I go up or down, I'm able to just slide right through a scale. Maybe uh, the 808 bass isn't like the best choice in the world for this. So let's go back over here and let's try to uh, grab a different instrument patch. All right, take this off. Go to, per uh, not percussion, let's go to keyboard. Bebop organ. Let's go back to this scale. That's pretty cool. What options do they have for scales? Let's see. Scale. Whoa, okay. Bebop dominant, seriously? So without actually having to play the scale, I'm sorry for all those that are in jazz school, this is probably gonna be super annoying. You don't actually have to know how to play the scale. You just have to know how to drag in between this and the octave. That's hilarious. That's going to make a lot of people mad. I can change the root note. Uh-oh. Uh, let's go over here. Psh, let's do a minor pentatonic. So just like recording some riffs, like... That is insane. I can change the key. Let's change it to B flat. Whew, for something you use so often, like a pentatonic scale, that opens up so much power. Oh, that's a little, uh, it's a little scary. That's pretty awesome. You can do so many of these. Man, they've got like a decent amount too. Let's grab a minor blue scale. Without actually having to play the scale, uh, I am curious. They say minor blues. Do they have the major blues on here? Let's see, what do we have? Major blues, is it gonna be right? Okay, all right. Okay, Apple, I see you, Apple. Pretty cool. Um, there's so much more to get into, but you can see from the initial thoughts, the way that you input is gonna be different than the experience that you would have uh, working on the DAW on your computer. To me, this is gonna be its own thing. In later videos, I wanna get into like tracking some live instruments, hook up an audio interface, but already just from like a MIDI input standpoint, 
The drum machine is really cool. Uh, the step sequencer, whether you're doing it with an instrument or with a drum set, these different, these scale options are wild because you can just drag your finger up and down and get some different sounds. I mean, I could definitely see myself utilizing this for just like ease of input, especially for some scratch tracks and then take this project and then complete it over on my computer. So um, Apple, I'm impressed. This is really cool starting out. Consider this the beginning of the journey of checking out Logic Pro for iPad. I can't wait to get a little deeper into this thing. Thanks for tuning in. Let's, uh, let's see what comes up next and I'll be in touch. All right, take it easy, y'all. Peace. Thank you.